The World Pavilion is a project of global proportions. This program will document the life of its designer, Duncan McKenzie, to explain how the idea evolved. A graduate of the Rhode Island School of Design and prolific creator, Duncan has used his skills to create installations that reflect his profound experiences with the planet. The World Pavilion is for all people to share an expanded global perspective by seeing the world around them. Growing up during the ecology movement of the 60s, with the image of the Earth from space, and the idea of thinking globally, I would ask myself, how does a person think globally? And how does a person get a global perspective? Duncan's life has been a progression of related projects and experiences that ultimately inspired the World Pavilion Project. Starting with Expo 67, the World's Fair in Montreal, Canada, where the pavilions and exhibits permanently influenced his perception of life. At Expo, I marveled at the Circle Vision Theater, with its 360-degree circular movie screen. You could see the world in all directions. We lived in Montreal, and I was only three, so I didn't know the difference between the World's Fair and the world. So to me, it just seemed like this was the world. Fantastic international architecture celebrating people and technology, and the promise of the future as we were fast entering the space age. Duncan saw the future lunar lander at the Expo, and in a few years, man would set foot on the moon. The exploration of space would always remain an influence and fascination. As a child, I always felt connected to the Earth. In summer, I slept in a tent, and in winter, I built igloos. These structures allowed me to think about space not only from the outside, but from the inside as well. Visiting the Ontario Science Centre led me to discovery through interactive exhibits and imprinted a sense of fascination with science. In the 1970s, as Apollo missions and satellites increased, images of the planet from outer space became more commonplace. Duncan took an outward bound course and applied his knowledge of navigation skills to this new global perspective. I assigned the grid of latitude and longitude, not just to the map, but to the Earth itself. I imagine the lines from space, and also from the surface, while looking up at the sky. Latitude and longitude inform me how to build my first large sculpture, a skateboard halfpipe. Just like the igloo, I understood the structure from the inside and the outside. The scale of project opened the gateway to designing things that were bigger than myself, and my education from the Lawrenceville School taught me about design as a visual language. In 1981, the space program was breaking new frontiers as NASA launched the first space shuttle. When Epcot at Disney opened in 1982, Duncan encountered a surprising vision from his childhood. Epcot magically transported me back to Expo 67 and reinforced the model of society celebrating human achievement and technology. The Circle Vision Theater at Epcot brought back memories of how the Circle Vision Theater at Expo had established a 360-degree way of seeing the world. The exploration of space continued to evolve as our perception of the Earth expanded. The following year inspired a foundational idea for the World Pavilion. Before entering the Rhode Island School of Design, Duncan continued his wilderness education with a semester course in Africa and scaled the peak of Mount Kenya, where he would develop a new awareness of the Earth around him. At 17,000 feet, rising up from the equator, Mount Kenya is a distinct point above the surrounding plains. We spent a night on the peaks and witnessed an expanded view of the planet from above the clouds. Imagine what you could see from a point over 10 times the height of the Empire State Building and how far that would extend your horizons. As the sun set and the full moon rose around us, we crossed the line of night and day as if sailing through space, the view extending to what seemed like the ends of the earth. The full moon set, and as the sun rose, I felt a deep connection to the earth's cycles. Little did I know that this experience would set a foundation for the next stage of ideas leading up to the World Pavilion. 
As humans' presence in space expanded, Duncan immersed himself in art school, where he was inspired by large-scale art and video installations. The Maparium, a three-story stained glass globe in Boston, would serve as a template for future visualizations. Namjoon Pike used multiple televisions to observe time and the moon, and Yoko Ono used live cameras to focus attention on the sky. From his loft in Providence, Duncan would discover a new way to see the world. I was watching a football game on live television. At halftime, the camera panned to the moon and paused for a long time. There was the moon, live, in daytime on the west coast. Then I looked up and saw the moon at night on the east coast. Then I realized they were both live. Looking into the TV was like looking through a window to California. Because of my experience from Mount Kenya, crossing from day into night, I could imagine being on the night side of the Earth, on the East Coast, while simultaneously viewing the day side of the Earth from the West Coast. Since there was one live camera in that time zone, then what if you had a live camera in every time zone? And if those cameras were connected to monitors, and those monitors were arranged in a circle, then a person standing in the middle, looking around, would see half the world in day and half the world in night, because it all would be live. So from one vantage point, a person would be looking around the globe at a single moment in time and space. That was 1987. The GPS halo of satellites had been introduced, but the internet was still a few years off. Duncan honed his skills at a home building school and then moved to California. In Santa Cruz, I built a studio, the framework based on the arches of a Quonset hut. I recycled the extra arches to build a meditation yurt. The room was a hemisphere, reminiscent of the Maparium. When the internet became available, I realized that my idea for a ring of monitors with live images could now expand to become a map of monitors with live webcams. So I wondered how that would look in a circular format. With this concept in mind, Duncan attended graduate school to refine his ideas, using 24 monitors to illustrate the passing line of night and day. After graduate school, he created a large scale model with still pictures to represent webcams from around the world. As technology advanced, the idea evolved from a circular wall of monitors to a circular screen made of LEDs. The epiphany of changing the circle of monitors to LED screens completely expanded the project's potential. The screens could now be on both sides of the wall and not only display the grid of live webcams on land, but also include programming about the oceans and the cosmos around us. With the International Space Station well under construction, the 21st century brought innovations like Google Earth to help visualize the planet. Duncan's ideas were now visionary in scale, and he used computers to illustrate his concept. One benefit of computer modeling is that you can create and alter large designs without any expense. When the map of monitors became a screen wall, it became large enough to need its own building. I had always described the World Pavilion as a Smithsonian-scale project, so I used Google Earth to model the pavilion at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. This would be the prototype for pavilions to be built around the world. There would be internet portals to connect the pavilions to other pavilions, so people could meet and interact with each other from around the planet and share an experience of the Earth on the Earth an attempt to think more globally by experiencing a larger global perspective. 